Wouldn't it be great if the things we wanted in life came with a guarantee? Well, the good news is they do. The difficult news for many of us is that we are the guarantor. What we do, how we act, and how committed we are to what we want will determine what we will receive from this journey called life. Hello and welcome to another edition of the On Air Book Club. My name is Titi Laya Oinson and I'm your host on the show. Uh, this particular podcast is put together because I'm in love with books. I love reading it. all different types of books, all shapes and sizes, all different genres. And today we're going to be hearing from an amazing piece uh, that just happened to come my way after going for a course in Abuja. Now, we had the opportunity to hear from someone called Dr. Ruben West. Now, if you're wondering who that is, I'll be reading out a profile on him in a little bit. But uh, first of all, let's figure out what you are looking for in a book. When you pick up a book, what is it that you hope to gain from it? What is it that you hope to learn from it? You know, sometimes you end up being taken to different countries, to different places, different spaces. Some books have the power to even just change your mind and mindset about where you are and where you've been and, of course, where you're going. Now, Dr. Ruben West is one of those authors who is truly one of a kind, and he's in the speaking and training industry. What sets him apart is not just his unique abilities to motivate, transform, and inspire on stage, but... Also, that fast, varied experience and success he's achieved prior to taking the stage. Now, he has some uh, trusted associates he's been working with, and he started several different businesses, generating millions of dollars, developing patented products, while also inspiring others to dream on a larger scale. Now, as a speaker, Dr. West has this unique ability to challenge his audience members and, of course, take this personal inventory thinking outside the box and striving for new levels of excellence. I've listened to him speak. I've heard him. I've connected with him and he is here with us. Hello and welcome, Dr. West. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. I like that introduction. Thank you. All right then. Now I could keep going on that introduction, but there's so much <laughs> to you that we probably wouldn't get to the book if I kept going. Uh, but uh, you need to talk to us about uh, what your book is about. What brought about you writing this piece? So you, what, what made me want to write this piece is I believe we're looking for tools to get to the next level. And sometimes we need next steps. See, most of the time when we want to do what we want to do, the reason people don't get started is because they're focusing on the last step. How is it going to end up? Where am I going to be? How am I going to make it work? And what I want them to do is not focus on the last step, just focus on the next step. And so in this book, I wanted to give people some next steps, <laughs> like right? Because sometimes, you know, I've read some great books from very famous people that have made it to the top of the world. And, and although what they said was great, I wasn't ready for those steps. They, they sounded great. They made sense. But 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 I needed something more practical for me where I was at. And so what I put this together was the, for for individuals who wanted that next step. And, and I believe it's in this book. OK, you call the book Destination Mastery. You know, yes. destination and mastery hardly ever come in the same sentence. Talkless of being the title of a book. How did you come about that title? Well, everybody wants to get somewhere. So the destination is where you're going. Mastery is how you get there. See, so many people want to focus on uh, their destiny, but what they should focus on is their habits and their habits will create their destiny. And so what I wanted to do was to give them some steps, some actions that they could take that if they did those on a regular basis and made those the habits, then they would achieve a level of mastery to help them get to the destination. My goal is maximum ability or maximum potential. I can't tell you whether you'll get there. I can't tell you whether you won't get there. But what I can tell you is that if you do the right things, you'll reach your maximum potential for wherever you want to go. Amen to that. Um, now, you, you pinpoint seven steps. You said seven. 
Uh, is there something special about that number seven? Why seven? You know, uh, there is something special about the number seven. But honestly, as I <laughs> as I really looked, I didn't I didn't decide on how many steps it would be first. I went and looked at how many steps I thought it took me to get to the places where I want to go. And then the people that I interviewed, I saw that they took those same steps. And so seven became the magic number because that was the number of steps that it took. Amen to that. Now, I'm going to be reading yeah. from this particular book here on the On Air Book Club. If you connect with this passage, why not talk to us on social media? Just use the hashtag TT's On Air Book Club. That's T I T I S On Air Book Club. And uh, yeah, ask us a few questions, and we will be tagging Dr. Ruben West on social media to figure out how we can answer some of the questions for you. I'm going to begin reading now from the introduction. Page one, Destination Mastery, Defining the Virus Success System. Who are you? You are yourself. But what is self? What does self mean? From a biological aspect, self is what is currently in the body. Anything different introduced into the body is considered non-self or foreign. The self aspect of the body then recognizes these different organisms as foreign and launches an attack against them, surrounding them and destroying them. This is the body's natural way of defending itself. In medicine, we call this process immunology. That's defined as science that deals with the ways in which the body protects itself from diseases and infections. But how can this same theory apply to our mindset? When we think of ourself from a mindset standpoint, we can describe it as our current set of beliefs, our habits, and all the events and influences that have shaped us to be who we are today. It is our beliefs about ourselves that shape our mindset. These beliefs may have been developed at a very early age, either from the influences of our parents, our peer groups, or things we saw or heard. All of this together causes us to develop a certain set of beliefs about who we are and where we fit in. So, how are the biologic definition of self and the mindset explanation of self related? Take a look at this example. Imagine feeling like something is wrong with your body. You go to your doctor and after a series of tests and a period of uncertainty, you get the news that you need a transplant. You start thinking about the many ways your life is about to change. The uncertainty almost paralyzes you, and you realize you must act for your life's sake. Good news. Everything goes well as far as your donor matching, your surgical procedure, and your initial recovery. However, shortly after this vital transplant procedure, your body starts to reject the new organ. Wait, what? Even though it was exactly what you needed? Even though this was the best possible option for you? Yes. Why does this happen? Let Dr. West explain. Imagine feeling like something is wrong with your mind. That something about you or within you needs to undergo a change. It might be a need or a desire like weight loss or a need to exercise, a new career or advancement in your current job, addition, additional training or education, a new business venture or entrepreneurship, maybe even a new relationship or friendship, better habits for saving, spending, organizing, or even cleaning. Then you take your newfound enlightenment to the next level with some preliminary actions. These are usually emotionally driven tasks that give you an immediate sense of accomplishment. You did something like buying new workout clothes or joining a gym or looking at training and educational classes, maybe cleaning out your car, closet or basement, getting a new calendar or planner for better organization and especially purchasing motivational books, CDs or DVDs. Over the next days, you feel great, you look great, you're excited. Hey, you're changing, you're altering your life course, you're going to feel better about yourself, your life, and your new outlook. Over the next weeks, though you might start to struggle, you feel fantastic one day, but frustrated or even defeated the next. Wait, something inside of you asks, you want 
to change? What's going on? Your viral success system works in much the same way as your body's actual immune system. The mission of your VSS is to destroy the foreign invader, right? Well, in this case, the enemy assault comes typically from new ideas or new thought processes, like those suggested in personal development. Wow. A powerful passage. Wow. Okay. Dr. West. You heard me read from that. I, I don't know how long ago you put this together. How long ago did you hear or did you read that particular passage? It was 2014, but you, you've just given it new life. Let me say that. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. So it's a powerful passage. It goes here, there, everywhere. It tries to tackle it from your experience and background in medical, uh, in the medical profession. And of course, your experience uh, in speaking and of course, coaching. So talk to us about that passage. What is it about this change that is basically fighting ourselves? Our goal is to achieve what we call in medicine stasis. That's a balance, right? There, there's stasis. It's, it's a, an area of balance, but not only in our body, in our life. So as, as much as we want to change what we've done and who we are, watch this. It's what we've done and it's who we are. And so anytime you try to change that, there's work involved because the body fights for us to remain the same. Now, we we want the change on a conscious level, but the fight for staying the same happens at a subconscious level. We've been programmed. And, and, and a lot of times we don't know it. I say it in the book that, you know, when we are younger, we have to go along to get along. We have to listen to what our teachers say, what our parents say, what our elders say. And so we learn to do what they say so that we don't rock the boat and so that we don't get in trouble. Now that's programming. So now when you start to say, I'm this, I, I'm going to be a global speaker. What? <laughs> Somebody told you you would never amount to anything. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, in the book, I talk about Dr. Maxwell Maltz in his book, Psycho Cybernetics. And he said there's three factors. And when these three factors are present, things get imprinted on our subconscious mind. Number one is something that's said to us by an authority figure. Number two, it's said with emotion or force. Number three, it's repeated often. When you get those three factors, it gets imprinted on your subconscious mind. Now that's below your conscious thought. So if a teacher or your parent or somebody told you, you'll never amount to anything. Mm. You're, you'll never have, when I leave you or if you leave me, you'll never have anyone else. You will always be poor. You will always be fat. See, those things get imprinted. And now when we go to make that change, those thoughts creep up in our minds subconsciously. Wow. Who do you think you are? You know you're not going to ever have anyone. You you know you'll never about to anything. And they even show up in that same voice. Wow. And so it has power over us. And so what I wanted to do in this book was to give them some strategies to overcome that voice. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, so strategies. The tips, right? You say that you call them steps initially. Yes. They're actually strategies. Yes. And of course... Yes tips yes exactly because i I give them the tips Mm. but then there's always an action item okay see uh, everybody Mm. says listen to this everybody says knowledge is power knowledge Mm. is power Mm. that's not true the application of knowledge is power Mm. there's so many people who know what to do but they don't have the courage and the skill set to apply what they know so they remain the same So it's not that knowledge is power, it's the application of knowledge. And so even though I give them the tips, I also give them some action steps to help apply those tips. Okay, I can see from uh, your mastery, I'm looking at page, uh, I think this is page 28 now of your book, Mastery Tip 1. And I love this because Mm -hmm. you put in the hashtag, watch what you say to yourself. Without keeping a close eye on your mouth and your mind, your words can taint your spirit, drain your energy, and create a toxic attitude. Let's talk a bit about that. Yeah, you know, even the Bible says the power of death and life is in the tongue, Hmm. right? And most people speak death, not life. See, so they'll say, oh man, I'm always screwing up something. Okay, then see, we fight to produce who we say we are. I always choose the wrong partner. Yeah. I'm always broke. Yeah. Mm. Right. And and then 
you want in the end we want to be right so when we speak those things subconsciously we work to make ourselves align with what we speak and so what we have to do a lot of times is get a new a vocabulary a new way of communicating a new way of speaking I, i'm not broke i'm overcoming financial challenges amen to that, you see, that that's the, you twisted that it around Yes, exactly. It's a different way. Here's another thing. Words have power, right? And, and so what people will say stuff like, um, it's a bad day. Well, in order for you to use the word bad or terrible or frustrating, those words, they have to have a context in your mind. So the minute you say bad, it's bringing you back to that context. Right. So yeah. so it's it's affecting your spirit when you say it's a bad day. Hmm. Number one, there's no such thing as a bad day. There's no such thing. I know people that will on the way to work, have a coffee, spill the coffee in their lap and, and, and watch this at 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m. They're still telling people about how they spilled coffee in their lap and it messed up their day. So watch. There's no such thing as a bad day. There's only bad moments that we choose to nurse all day. You could have let it go five, six hours ago, but you keep speaking it. You keep mm -hmm. thinking about it. Watch this. What you what you focus on, you become. Mm -hmm. Right? So if you focus on the fact that you had a bad day, it's going to turn out to be a bad day. And you're going to look for everything that you can bring up to prove that it was a bad day. So what you tune into, you turn into. What you tune into, you turn into. So what I want them in directing their thoughts is put their thoughts on things that are positive. I keep a gratitude journal. I keep a thankful journal. So, and, and, and it's a competition. So with myself, with my own mindset, people do great things for me all the time. But watch this, bad things are get more attention than good things. Bad news press gets more attention than positive press. Why? Because typically the bad things will happen to us more immediate than the good things. So if they're talking about a politician and he did this, stole money, uh, those kind of things, it makes headlines because we're thinking, man, that could affect me right now. If they're talking about how they're going to build a new school or build a new road or build a new highway, that's years in the making. So we don't think in a positive way. That's why I put directing the thoughts. Hopefully that. That helps. I know that was a long answer, but no, no, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. Uh, honestly, uh, once again, thank you so much, Dr. Ruben West, for joining us on the On Air Book Club. I think it's about time for me to take uh, a second passage. Hope you don't mind if I read a second passage from oh. your book. All right. So it's so interesting that you should talk about gratitude and having a gratitude journal because what we're reading from now is step two acting with gratitude and faith. Wouldn't it be great if the things we wanted in life came with a guarantee? Well, the good news is they do. The difficult news for many of us is that we are the guarantor. What we do, how we act, and how committed we are to what we want will determine what we will receive from this journey called life. Moments of fear and periods of uncertainty are inevitable, and they're part of the growth and development process. Furthermore, we must learn to be thankful for what we already have in order to receive more. In this chapter, I will illustrate how planting the seeds of faith and gratitude are key components of your VSS. When I was learning martial arts, I was taught that students should always bow to the instructor. However, I realized that as an instructor, I should have just as much gratitude and appreciation for my student as they had for me. We should be bowing to each other. There could be no student-instructor relationship if either party was missing. My goal was to establish long-term meaningful relationships with the students as well as with their families. Reuben. My best friend Kevin and I had been teaching martial arts for years. And now we had finally had our own building for martial arts school. I had been in the building before, and this would be the first time walking in as 50-50 owner. This place was once a grocery store, a ceramic shop, as well as a vacant building, but now just a disaster. The building had plumbing, electrical, insulation issues. Actually, the list of needed work was extensive and well beyond our abilities to fix and our financial resources at the time. 
Kevin told me how the owner came down on the price just because he knew and thought it was worthwhile undertaking. Kevin was enthusiastic and excited, but I remember standing in the middle of the main room with a smile on my face, thinking to myself, what a disaster. Now, you're probably wondering, why did you agree to buy it if you couldn't see how it was going to work? Well, this is what you do in a collaborative, achievement-driven, and supportive relationship. Based on our history of working together, I trusted Kevin's judgment. This was a faith situation, and I believed it would pay off. I was thankful to have a building to work on, and believe it or not, being thankful goes a long way. University of California at, at Davis professor Robert Emmons discovered some very interesting and eye-opening results from his research on gratitude and thankfulness. Professor Emmons found that people who kept gratitude journals on a weekly basis reported fewer physical symptoms, exercised more regularly, felt better about their lives as a whole, and were more optimistic about the upcoming week compared to those who recorded hassles or neutral life events. In addition, participants who kept gratitude journals were more likely to make progress towards their personal life goals. The findings in this study confirmed what I came to believe about gratitude. The findings speak to the physical and more personal benefits of gratitude. This is why in order to have a strong virtual success system, gratitude is a must. I personally keep a gratitude journal and the one I use is actually a phone app. I've set it on pop-up on my screen twice per day. The first time is in the morning so that I can start my day with the things I'm grateful for. And the second time is in the evening so that I can record the experiences and encounters from the day. By keeping my mind on what I'm thankful for, I direct my thoughts towards positivity and abundance, which gives me the ability to attract more of the same. I, um, the sort of books I like reading are um, comedy, fantasy, light novels, not novels. Mm. I like reading novellas. I don't like reading novels. I like reading mangas too and comics. Um, I think Nigerian writers are working and doing their best to to educate the young ones so far. I'm reading from Destination Mastery, uh, written by Dr. Reuben West. And Dr. Reuben West is still in the studio here with us. Hello once again. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's great to hear you read that back to me. Honestly, the Gratitude Journal, I didn't, I never knew that. So I, I'm going to share something of myself. I have Gratitude Affirmation Alarms on my phone. I have to put my uh, phone my on eye. silent. So every hour, now every hour, people actually, it drives people crazy. Every hour I have something I'm grateful for that I saved in my phone to go off as alarms every single hour. And the next upcoming alarm is, um, I am so happy and grateful now. I am relevant and important in all spaces. That's the next one to go off at exactly uh, 2 p.m. Uh, GMT plus one. And I have them every hour like that. But I didn't think about journaling. So what is so important about writing these things down? Remember, the chapter is directing your thoughts. And in order to write something down, you have to think about it. So it teaches us to consciously think about the positive and not focus on the negative. Now, here's another thing I, I got to share with you. When you write it down and you write it down consistently, and I write down all the small things. My, my son and I, he's nine. We were at breakfast. Uh, we were sitting there. I was reviewing his life principles. So we have these nine principles that I want him to live by. He's a speaker at nine years old. Uh, he started when he was four. And, and, and someone heard us talking. And when we got ready to leave and went to pay, they said um, they heard you mentoring your son and they thought it was amazing. And they covered your meal oh, for you wow. and your son. Oh, wow. How powerful is that? 
How wow. come? But you know, I went right home and put it in my gratitude journal, mm. right? Uh, and it doesn't matter. Somebody might buy me a cup of coffee. They might open the door for small things. Now watch, on those days where I'm feeling low and, and this happened and that happened, when I go back to my journal and start looking at how life has treated me all these instances and all these days with all these great opportunities, I cannot focus on that one incident. That one incident seems irrelevant to all the great things that have happened. Now, if it's something that negative negative that happens to us, we tend to draw attention to that negative because it happens and it hurts. And we do that over and over again. So when something positive happens, it doesn't affect us the same way. So I want to steer my attention towards all the positive. And then if something negative happens, I just go back and read. I was like, well, this happened, this happened. Look what happened yesterday. Look what happened today. Mm. Uh, you're in my gratitude journal. When you said, Dr. West, I want you to be on my shelf. Oh, I went right, right in my gratitude. <laughs> That's the universe opening the door for me, mm. you see? Mm. And, and if we don't focus on that, we can think that everything that happens to us is bad and it's not the case. So I think writing it down and recording it directs our thoughts towards the positive as opposed to the negative. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much for, for sharing that with us and thanks for sharing this amazing book with us as well. Now, the On Air Book Club is about amazing books like this and we hope to help reach people who have probably not really had the best reading culture to understand that they there's so much that they can learn from books such as yours. Uh, Dr. Ruben West uh, joined us on the On Air Book Club all the way from, uh, you're in the U.S., yes? Yes. All right, where in the U.S. are you? I am in Bloomington, Illinois, about an hour and a half south of Chicago. All right. And you, you had to get up really early for this particular podcast. Thank you so much for your dedication. And thanks for putting this particular piece together. I can see a lot of spaces for people to take notes and write things down in this book. It seems like a workbook. Yes. Yes. Because, again, it's not just about getting the knowledge. It's about taking the action with the knowledge. I would love to have a copy of a physical copy of this book uh, for our archive right here at Africa Business Radio. It'll be such a pleasure to have your book on our shelves. Well, I'm planning on coming to Nigeria to do some training, so I'll bring one when I come. Amen to that. I can't wait to meet you personally. Uh, but uh, thank you so much for joining us on the On Air Book Club. And uh, if you would like to reach out to us on social media, please do. Just make sure you use the hashtag TT's On Air Book Club on social media. That's for Facebook, Twitter, and, of course, Instagram. I'll be posting and uh, uh, responding to a lot of your messages soon. There's also a WhatsApp group called the On Air Book Club where we have other lovers of books all come together to be a part of this amazing, amazing platform. Uh, Dr. Ruben, I'm honored. I'm so amazed that you, you took out time for us. Thank you so, so much. You're welcome. And thank you for the work that you do in helping people find great pieces from around the world, because it's not just a book club. It's a life changing club. That's really what it is. You just use the books to change lives. And so I commend you on the work that you're doing. Thank you so much, Dr. West. Ha, ha, ha.